Let's take a look at the internal anatomy of the heart, and my approach is going to be to talk through some valves. We're going to do an overview of blood as it comes into the heart from the body, work its way through the different chambers of the heart, out to the lungs, back from the lungs, into the heart, and then back out to the body itself. We need to think of the heart as being two sets of chambers, one receiving chamber on one side, it goes down into an output chamber, we don't come back into the other side as a receiving chamber and then output chamber. So think of it twofold. I've cleaned out most of the blood and everything, so it should not be too graphic for this. Um, but we're going to be focusing on specific structures found inside. So let's take a look at the heart. Now what I've done is I've taken a, uh, and cut both sides, both the right and left ventricles of this, and you'll be able to see inside the chambers. Now in looking at our checklist, let's actually start by looking at the back side where we're going to be seeing a, a bunch of veins and uh, other tubes that we'll need to see. These are veins and arteries. Now we tend to think of veins as big things and all that when in fact they're very loose and very very pliable. This is one vein and if you notice this vein will go all the way through. Okay, This is going to be the superior up here and the inferior being a cava. Now what these will do is they will run into this chamber right here. Now my fingers inside and we with the external anatomy I explained it that these are the oracles. The oracles will tell us that we're inside the atrium. So if I were to open up the left the, excuse me the right ventricle and actually look into this chamber I'll be seeing the inside of the right atrium. Now you'll notice that there are some valves, some flaps that will separate this off. Here's one flap right here. And these flaps are very thin pieces of tissue right here. In fact, if I zoom in a little bit, we'll be able to see those a little bit better. There we are. One valve right here one valve right here, and one valve on the bottom right here. So we call this a tricuspid valve. There are three of them. What holds these valves or these flaps in place are little white cords called chordae tendinae. These are neat little things. Uh, they are literally the heart strings. So if you're pulling and tugging at somebody's heart strings, um, I guess this is not so romantic of a way of thinking of it. But basically that's what they're referring to. Now these chordae tendinae are anchored into place in the ventricle wall by papillary muscles, finger-like muscles that will hold those. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut through this so you can see, get a better view inside the atrium and we can see the structures involved. Now as I said, this is going to be the superior vena cava. We have the inferior vena cava down below they both lead into this chamber of the right atrium. Now you'll see little pits and grooves inside the right atrium and when we're, since we're up in the upper part or in the atrium part of the heart, these are called musculi pectinati. Musculi pectinati are little chambers or grooves that we find within that wall. We're going, blood will flow through these valves, these flaps of the chordae tendinae, down into the right ventricle. Now you'll notice that there are little bands that hold the right ventricle together. That's so the walls of this does not open up too, too much. I can cut through those. And I'm going to open up this just a little bit more so you can see that the wall of the right ventricle is actually quite thin. Now the ventricle is the output chamber. What it's going to do is it's going to send blood out of the heart. The atrium doesn't need to be very thick because it's, it's just a receiving chamber. Blood will go through into the ventricle on both sides. This, because it's so thin, tells me that this muscle doesn't need to work very hard. In fact, what's going to happen is blood will go out of the right ventricle, out, if I were to follow up, I'm in the right ventricle now, I'm going to follow up, and it's going to branch out to small holes on either side and these are going to be your pulmonary arteries. Arteries are things, are structures that will take blood away from the heart. 
artery away. The word away starts with A, ends with Y. Artery starts with A, ends with Y. You figure it out. Now, the blood is out to the lungs. It will, blood will actually exit the pulmonary arteries and there is a semilunar valve to prevent backflow from blood coming back from the lungs um, into the right ventricle. So it actually has a safety valve. Now, blood will go from the, out to the lungs to drop off the carbon dioxide and uh, exchange it for oxygen. So it needs to come back to the heart because this blood now is replenished with oxygen, needs to make its way back out to the rest of the body. So it enters the left side of the heart. First thing it does needs to do is come into the receiving chamber. Now the receiving chamber is always going to the atrium. So we see a bunch of holes or openings that will be, actually in this case it was, it's just this one right here. Oh, there's another one right here. These are going to be the pulmonary veins from the right and left sides. Okay. Now, vein because vein comes into the heart. Vein has the word uh, is it spelled V-E-I-N has the word in right into it. Again, you figure it out. Now, the blood is going to be taking a look at the left. Uh, the blood is going to be entering the left atrium. Let's take a look inside, and we're going to see the same setup. We're going to be seeing inside the musculi pectinati. We're going to be seeing in this case, we're going to be seeing one, two valves. This is a bicuspid valve. Again, held in place by chordae tendinae. And notice that the chordae tendinae is much stronger in this case. Why? Because this wall, notice how thick it is compared to the right ventricle, this wall is a lot thicker. That means that this muscle has to work a lot more, and the reason for that is because it has to pump it out to the entire body. It has to defy gravity, shoot blood up to the head, so we get plenty of circulation there, shoot it down to the feet, and make sure it's all uh, circulating properly. Now you'll notice on the inside of the ventricle we also see chambers and pits and grooves. Okay, Up in the atrium we call these musculi pectinati. Down in the ventricle we call these trabeculae carnae. I tend to think of carne like the Spanish word for meat and chili con carne and things like that. Carne means meat. This is the ventricles, the meatier part of the heart. So trabeculae carne. Now, from the left ventricle, what's going to happen? I'm going to slide underneath this valve. The valve separates the atrium and the ventricle, and you'll see. Actually, my finger isn't quite long enough. It's going to go all the way out the aorta. Now, it does have a little branch. Now, the aorta was going to lead to the bottom part of the heart, but you'll notice that it also comes out here. This is the brachiocephalic. So blood will go out the aorta down and to the rest of the body, or it'll go out the brachiocephalic and divide into right and left sides. So we're going to be seeing that, and remember that the cat was set up a little bit differently, um, where we have the left subclavian right away. We're going to see something very similar within the human, just different uh, structures and we find different challenges when you take a look at the entire structure with all these veins and arteries. So again, to review, what we have for a basic overall um, blood flow as blood comes in to the heart from the body, what we find is that the blood will come in to the right atrium. It's going to do that by way of the superior and inferior vena cava. It comes into the right atrium, goes past the tricuspid valve, goes down through the tricuspid valve, which is held in place by chordae tendinae and the papillary muscles. It's going to come down into the right ventricle. Now from the right ventricle, it's going to go out to the lungs. It does that by way of pulmonary artery. Pulmonary means lungs, artery means going away, so pulmonary artery. There is a semilunar valve that prevents the backflow from uh, from the lungs. So it's the pulmonary semilunar valve, pulmonary artery. It's going to go out to the lungs. It's going to come back to the heart from the lungs by way of the pulmonary veins. It's going to enter the left atrium, pass through the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle, go out the aortic semilunar valve to the aorta. The blood will then go out to the rest of the body and be passed along arteries, then capillaries and veins come back make its way again into the superior inferior vena cava, back to the right side of the heart again.